students welcome to sunil's tutorial i'm sunil mehwani and today we'll be doing the chapter called as solutions and colligated properties let's start with uh, some basic definitions what do i understand by solution now guys suppose if i take a beaker there is water here this is water i put some sugar in it right and i will get i stir this now the minor part is sugar the major part is water and this is a homogeneous mixture if i want i can separate them by simple means this is not a compound but this is a homogeneous mixture that is called as a solution the homogeneous mixture of two or more components is called as a solution out of this the minor component is called as the solute and the major component is called as solvent so the homogeneous mixture of two or more components is called as solution the minor component is called as solute and the major component is called as solvent fine do we get this in clear so do we understand what is solution a solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more components let's write that down a solution a homogeneous mixture of two or more components is known as known as solution What do we understand by solute? The component of the solution which is in less proportion is called as solute. I just showed you the example. Sugar was present in less proportion, therefore that was called as solute. The component of the solution present or used. in less proportion the component of the solution used in less proportion is known as solute next solvent water was the solvent sugar was the solute in that example and water was the solvent fine do we get this in clear Now let's see what is solvent. Now the example that I have given you is that sugar was the solute and water was the solvent. So the component component of the solution, the component of the solution used in more proportion. is known as solvent so you have solution you have solute and you have solvent now let's see what are the different types of solution you have different types of solution based on the solute and the solvent that is used right depending upon the state of solute and the state of solvent you have different types of solution I'll give you an example like right, for example suppose if the solute is in solid and the solvent is in liquid this you could have multiple examples of this kind for example the one that i gave you sugar and water sugar is in solid state water is in liquid state the solute is in solid state the solvent is in liquid state right so i can have sugar and water i could have salt and water i could have multiple such examples sugar in water right next liquid in liquid what your milk man would do right you would add water to milk or you add alcohol to water alcohol is in liquid form water is also in liquid form so you could have alcohol in water 
next you have gas and liquid right example uh, all your carbonated drinks all your uh, soft drinks as you may you may say it aerated water they all have gas carbon dioxide in water so you could have uh, your example would be your carbonated drinks drinks where the solute is carbon dioxide the solvent is water the solute is in gaseous state and the solvent is in liquid state then you could have solid and solid where the solute is solid and the solvent is solid for example all your alloys alloys are an excellent example of solid and solid right uh, then you have you could have liquid and solid for example if i were to put mercury in steel mercury is in liquid state and steel is in solid state so mercury in steel is an example of uh, liquid and solid then you have gas and solid um gas in solid uh, your charcoal experiment your charcoal cavity experiment right where your gas would be the solute and uh, your charcoal cavity would be the solvent right so your absorption of any of the gases would be example of gas in solid so this would be your absorption not absorption absorption of any of the gas let's say sulfur dioxide gas by charcoal cavity right then you have solid and gas when the solute is solid and the solvent is gas for example you would have uh, naphthalene balls right you have naphthalene balls which are used to keep cockroaches away from your wardrobe after being in air then you could have liquid and gas where you would have the solute would be liquid and the solvent would be gas for example water vapor present in air solute is liquid solvent is gas so that is your vaporization of liquid and air vaporization gas and gas whether solute as well as the solvent both are gases for example air is a mixture of gases so these are the different types of solution that you have based on the state of the solute and the solvent now let's get get back to our original example my original example was that if i took a beaker of water i put some sugar in it sugar water i'm going to get a solution right since i put sugar in it the water is going to be sweet i want to find out how sweet i want to know i want to have a numerical value to find out the sweetness of this water i should be able to measure the sweetness of this water now what are the different methods in which you can do this this is called as how sweet it will be can be measured in numerical value in terms of concentration now that means if i want to find out how sweet the water is i should know what is the concentration of this solution right if i want to know how sweet the water is i should know what is the concentration of the solution that brings me to the question how do i find out the concentration of a solution right in order to find out concentration of a solution there you have different methods right Let's see what are the different methods 
to find out the concentration of the solution. Now try to understand, we are trying to find out the strength of the solution. Strength of the solution as in, if I were to tell you in simple language, how sweet the water is, right? Now, the different ways of expressing concentration of a solution. What are the different ways in which I could express concentration of the solution? The first method is called as percentage by weight. Very simple method. Percentage by weight. Beaker, water, sugar or salt, whatever I want I could take here. Say sugar, I have stick to my original equation and this is my solution. Homogeneous mixture. Okay. Now, percentage by weight is how much sugar have you put in how much water. It is nothing but the ratio of the weight of the solute to the weight of the solution. Right. I put 4 grams of sugar and say let's assume that the total weight of the solution is say 6 grams or 7 grams. So that would be my percent by weight, right? So how do I express percentage by weight? Percentage by weight, definition wise, definition, it is the weight of the solute. It is weight of solute as a percentage, as a percent of total weight of the solution of total weight of solution. So that means mathematically I can therefore say that percent by weight percent by weight of solute is equal to weight of solute upon weight of solution. Weight of solute divided by weight of solution into 100 right do we get this thing here so that is what is percentage by weight percentage by weight is nothing but the weight of solute upon weight of solution into 100 let's see a few numericals on this so that we can have this concept clearly understood take down these take down the so I will formula and do the numerical then and there so that you understand that concept. Uh, let's see the numerical space on this. Do one or numerical so that you understand. Uh, what is the percentage by weight? What is the percent by weight? What is the percent by weight of sodium hydroxide? of sodium hydroxide if if 2.25 grams if 2.25 grams of sodium hydroxide is dissolved in if 2.25 grams of sodium hydroxide is dissolved in 6.25 grams of water. Two point two five grams of sodium hydroxide is dissolved in six point two five grams of water. Now in that case guys what will be my total weight of solution? My weight of solute is two point two five grams weight of solvent is six point two five grams so weight of the solution will be 2.25 plus 6.25 that's going to be nothing but 8.5 grams we just said that percent by weight by weight of solute is nothing but weight of solute weight of solute upon weight of solution into 100 Weight of solute is nothing but 2.25. Weight of solution is 8.5 into 100. 
So this is going to be nothing but 26.47%. That's the concentration of this sodium hydroxide solution. So do we understand what is percent by weight? It is nothing but the weight of solute divided by weight of solution into 100. Right? Next. That was the first method for measuring the concentration of the solution. Then the other method that you have is called as mole fraction. Right? What do I understand by mole fraction? Mole fraction of a you could either have mole fraction of the solute or you could have solvent. If you have mole fraction of the solute, it is the ratio of the number of moles of solute to the total number of moles of solute and solvent present in the solution. Definition. It is, it is the ratio, it is the ratio of number of moles of solute okay. you have to write it this way because there are two mole fractions so I write mole fraction of solute of solute is the ratio of the number of moles of solute moles of solute it is the ratio of the number of moles of solute to the total number of moles of solute and solvent. To the total number of moles of solute and solvent. That will be my mole fraction of the solute. Right? So therefore I can say that mole fraction of solute, therefore mole fraction of Solute is nothing but moles of solute, moles of solute upon total moles in the solution, right? It is nothing but moles of solute upon total moles in solution, right? Now, this is nothing but moles of solute. moles of solute upon moles of solute plus moles of solvent plus moles of solvent right total number of moles of solution is nothing but moles of solute plus moles of solvent now I could have a similar thing for a uh, mole fraction of the solvent so I could say that First of all, this symbolically can be said that mole fraction of the solute is nothing but the number of moles of solute to the number of moles of solute plus solvent. Where I can say that N1 is the number of moles of solute and N2 is the number of moles of solvent. Where N1 is number of moles of solvent and N2 is number of moles of solute. Right? So do we understand this? A uh, uh, similar thing I could say for mole fraction of this was solute. I could say for solvent also mole fraction of solvent it is nothing but moles of solvent upon total moles of solution right so this can be written as moles of solvent upon moles of solute plus moles of solvent total number of moles of solution will be moles of solute plus moles of solvent right this can be written as moles of solvent uh, I could say that this is mole fraction of solvent is nothing but moles of solvent that is n1 upon n2 plus n1 where I have already told you that 
n1 is the number of moles of solvent and n2 is the number of moles of solute. Fine, do we get the same here? Now, mole fraction. Since it is a ratio, what will be its units? No units because it's a it's a ratio. It's a ratio between similar quantities. So I can say that mole fraction is a unitless quantity. Mole fraction is a unitless quantity. Mole fraction is a unitless quantity. And for binary solutions. What do I understand by binary solution? A solution that has only one solute and one solvent. Mole fraction of the solute plus mole fraction of solvent. What should it be equal to? One. Right? So for a binary solution, mole fraction of the solute plus mole fraction of the solvent will be one. Let's try to understand this concept more clearly with the help of a numerical. I take on these. Calculate. Calculate. Calculate the mole fraction of potassium hydroxide solution in water. Calculate the mole fraction of potassium hydroxide in water containing. 28% containing 28% of potassium hydroxide what is the mole fraction of water now Let's see this. They are saying that calculate the mole fraction of potassium hydroxide solution in water. Now, first of all, I can say that what will be the molecular weight? Molecular weight of potassium hydroxide. Molecular weight of potassium hydroxide is going to be. Fifty-six. Molecular weight of potassium hydroxide is 56. So in that case, what will be the number of moles of potassium hydroxide? Number of moles of a given substance is nothing but weight of the substance divided by molecular weight. So this will be weight of KOH divided by molecular weight of KOH. Weight of KOH is 28. Molecular weight is 56. Right? So in that case, this is weight of KOH which was given to you in the sum. So this is 0 0.5. So it's 28%. Ah, 28% of KOH by weight. So 28%, that means you have weight of, uh, in 100, you have 28. So in that case, your weight of the solute will therefore be 28 grams. Okay? Then similarly, if we are saying that, uh, There is 28 coming to your question. 28 percent of KOH in water. In 28 percent of KOH solution containing 28 percent of KOH solution contains 28 percent of KOH. Now, if the solution contains, see, uh, answering your question. If it contains 28% of KOH, now percentage that means the total should be 100. That means my weight of KOH plus weight of water should be equal to 100. If it contains 28% of KOH, that means the total of both the things, the solute and solvent should be 100. Out of this, if I take this as 28, weight of KOH is 28 plus weight of water 100 why am i taking 100 because that's percentage so in that case i will come to know weight of water is 72 right once i have this then i can find out the number of moles of water 
number of moles of water will be nothing but weight of water no for that i need to know molecular weight of water first let's write the molecular weight of water molecular weight of water is going to be nothing but 18 so therefore i can say that number of moles number of moles of water number of moles of water will be nothing but weight of water upon molecular weight of water weight of water is nothing but 72 molecular weight of water is 18 so this should give you 4 now once i know the number of moles of koh and water i can find out the mole fraction i can say that mole fraction of koh that is mole fraction of solute is nothing but number of moles of solute upon total number of moles present in the solution that is 0.5 plus 4 that 0.5 upon 4.5 When you divide this, this should come to 0.111. Four decimal places will be 1111. Then similarly, I can find out the mole fraction. Ah, uh, mole fraction of say water. That is solvent. Is number of moles of solvent, which is four divided by total number of moles in solution. 0.5 plus four. Four divided by 4.5, which will work out to 0. Eight 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 nine. Fine. Right? So that's how you find out mole fraction. Fine. Right? Do we get this in clear? So do we understand the concept of mole fraction? Next, let's move on to another concept, guys. We did mole fraction. The next concept we will see is molarity. Now, I presume you all have already learned this somewhere in your school also. What is molarity? It is the number of moles of solute per liter of solution. molarity definition what do i understand by molarity it is the number of moles of solute it is number of moles of solute there is a number of moles of solute per liter of solution right so that is what is molarity mathematically i can say that molarity is number of moles of solute upon volume in liter right so i could say that molarity is nothing but n upon v right where m is the molarity n is the number of moles of solute and v is the total volume of the solution in liters right uh what will be the units of molarity the units of molarity will be nothing but number of moles of solute per liter will be nothing but moles per liter moles per liter right that is going to be the units for molarity let's see a numerical and understand this take down please what is the molarity of a solution What is the molarity of a solution prepared by dissolving What is the molarity of the solution prepared by dissolving 73 grams of HCl Seventy-three grams of HCl in six hundred milliliters of water. Seventy-three grams of HCl in six hundred milliliters of solution. Of water, sorry, six hundred milliliters of solution. Now, first of all, when you have to do molarity, you have to make sure that the volume of the solution is in liters. To convert this into liters, I will divide by thousand. So volume of the solution will be 600 upon 1000 liters. Now let's find out the molecular weight weight of HCl. Right, one plus 35.5 that is 36.5. Right, 
right? Next, let's find out the number of moles of HCl. Number of moles of HCl. Number of moles of HCl. I just told you how to find out number of moles. It is nothing but weight of HCl upon molecular weight of HCl. Weight of HCl is given to you as 73 grams. Molecular weight you just found out is 36.5. That is 2 moles. Right? Once you have this, then you can find out molarity. Molarity is nothing but N upon V. N we found out as 2. V is nothing but 600 upon 1000. Denominator of denominator becomes numerator. So this will be 2 into 1000 divided by 600. When you simplify this, you will get this answer as 3.33 moles per litre. Right? So that is molarity. Next, let's see another concept guys. Next, this was molarity. Now, please pay attention to what I say now. That was molarity. Now, I will see another concept which is molality. Similar sounding words. Right? Do we get this thing here? So, molality is nothing but, uh, let's I'll just write this on the other side of the board. which is nothing but molality. Now what do you understand by molality? Molality is nothing but the number of moles of solute per thousand grams of solvent. There it was the number of moles of solute in one liter of solution. Here it is the number of moles of solute per thousand grams of solvent. Right? Do you understand? There is a minute difference in what you say. Like this, in terms of words, molarity and molality. <coughs> Right? And definition wise also, they are quite similar. It is nothing but the number of moles of solute present, number of moles of solute present in 1000 grams of solvent. Right? 1000 grams of solvent or that is 1 kg of solvent. Right? So, uh, what is the difference between molarity and molality? The difference between molality and molarity is that molality is expressed in terms of mass whereas molarity is expressed in terms of volume. That was number of moles of solute per liter. This is number of moles of solute per thousand grams. That is expressed in terms of volume. This is expressed in terms of mass. So I can say that, I'll just write that down so that you know what is the difference between them. Difference between molality and molarity is that molality is expressed in terms of mass, is expressed in terms of mass of solvent and molarity is expressed in terms of volume of solution. That's my difference between molality and molarity. So thus Mathematically, I can say that molality is nothing but moles of solute, moles of solute upon mass of solvent. And you have to make sure that the mass of solvent is in kgs. Like how in molarity, the volume of the solution has to be in liters. Here you have to make sure that the mass of the solvent is in kgs. Right? Let's try to understand this with the help of a numerical. Take down please. 
what molality of solution what molality of solution is prepared by dissolving what molality of solution is prepared by dissolving by dissolving 10 grams is prepared by dissolving 10 grams of benzoic acid 10 grams of benzoic acid in 300 grams of benzene Now the first thing I need to do is convert the mass of solvent into kg. So this is 300 into 10 raised to minus 3 kg. That is my mass of solvent. Now let's find out the molecular weight of benzoic acid. 7 molecules of carbon plus you will have 6 molecules of hydrogen plus 2 molecules of oxygen so when I solve this this should come to 122 that will be my molecular weight of benzoic acid once I know the molecular weight I can find out number of moles I already explained this to you that number of moles is nothing but weight of solute upon molecular weight of solute weight of solute is nothing but 10 grams molecular weight of solute is nothing but 122 grams so this is going to be nothing but 10 upon 122 which should be 0 0.08196 once I have the number of moles, then I can find out molality. Molality is nothing but mass of solute, which is uh, moles of solute, not mass of solute, moles of solute, which is 0 0.08196 divided by mass of solvent in kgs, which you found out as 300 into 10 raised to minus 3 kgs. So in that case, you will get this answer as 0.2732 moles right that is what is molality right next the next thing that we will see is normality normality is nothing but the grams equivalent weight of solute per liter of solution. Normality is defined definition wise. It is nothing but the grams equivalent weight of solute. Grams equivalent weight of solute per liter of solution. Right, that is what is normality. Normality is grams equivalent weight. Now I hope you all know what is equivalent weight. Equivalent weight is the number of replaceable hydrogen or hydroxyl ions present in the compound. Right. So thus I could say that normality, mathematically normality is nothing but grams equivalent weight of solute. Grams equivalent weight of solute grams equivalent weight of solute divided by volume of solution in liter volume of solution in liters right let's try to further understand the concept with the help of a numerical take down please calculate the normality of a solution Calculate the normality of a solution 
containing containing 140 grams of NaOH in 1200 milliliters in 1200 milliliters of solution first thing what I need to do is convert the volume of solution into liters now let's find out the molecular weight of NaOH molecular weight of NaOH 23 plus 16 plus 1 40 once I know the molecular weight of NaOH then I can find out normality right let's find out number of moles of solute Gram equivalent weight. I can straight away say normality. Molecular weight. Let's find out equivalent weight first. Equivalent weight is nothing but molecular weight. Since this is NaOH, it will be divided by number of replaceable. hydroxyl ions right so in this case this is going to be molecular weight 40 divided by 1 so that will be my equivalent weight now once I have this then I can find out my gram equivalent weight gram equivalent weight gram equivalent weight is nothing but your weight of the solute weight of the solute is given to you as 140 gram divided by equivalent weight 40 right so this should give you 3.5 once I have this then I can find out normality it is nothing but gram equivalent weight divided by volume of solution right that is 3.5 divided by volume of solution is going to be nothing but 1.2 liters so your normality is going to be nothing but 2.9166 normal right okay this finishes your basic concepts of solutions and colligative property please stop this here for the day thank you very much